My name is Brad Heath. I'm the pipe major of the Northwest Territorial Pipe Band. We're a grade four recreational pipe band here in the city of Yellowknife. We're not a competition band, we're more of a community service pipe band. We perform at events throughout the city of Yellowknife from September every year till Canada Day Parade on July 1st. That's our big year-end event. Uh, the challenges we face in keeping our pipe band alive and growing is that Yellowknife is a very transient city. People come and they stay two or three years or two or three decades and then they, they move on. So we're constantly training new pipers and drummers and often we get people trained and they move on down the road. So that's a big challenge for us. The other challenge is that Yellowknife is obviously a winter city. It's cold and dark here much of the year and it's difficult for people to come out and practice when it's minus 40. They might be dealing with a dead battery in their car or trying to keep their furnace going. As soon as we can, we get outside and play outside, but that's usually not until mid-May, and then we're practicing marching, getting ready for Canada Day Parade on July 1st. But right now we have 10 pipers and six drummers, so we're a good-sized pipe band, and we're fairly confident about the future of our band, that we can keep it alive and performing for Yellowknife like we've done for nearly 50 years. Mr. Whitford, are you ready? There we go. Color party, you ready? Sergeant Major, anytime, sir. My name is Jeff Phillips. I'm the drum major for the NFT pipe band. I'm not a drum major in the true sense that I don't lead the band uh, with a mace, uh, but I am the lead tip, and uh, I'm the one that actually performs the instruction for our, our students. We've done quite a bit of playing for royalty in the past. Uh, Queen Elizabeth has, was here in 1970 as well as in 1994. I believe we played in 70. Uh, certainly played it for her in 94. Her son, Prince Charles, opened up a museum here in 1979. We played for him, as well as her grandson, Prince William, and his wife, Kate, were here in 2011. And uh, amazingly enough, Floyd Adlam was able to play for all three generations, which is remarkable. We attend the Remembrance Day ceremonies on November 11th. We also have uh, the drum corps march with the troops in the streets uh, with the RCMP the Legion folk and as well as the cadets uh, and it's usually anywhere between minus 10 Celsius and minus 30 so it, it can get quite cold on the legs to say the least. We also have uh, public practices that we attend. Uh, public practices what we do is we practice on Tuesday nights and instead of practicing at a normal location we'll mix it up every now and then and we'll practice at the Black Knight pub or we'll practice at the Bush Pilots Monument in the summertime which is really nice because people come up and they can hear it from miles around. It's absolutely wonderful. Uh, Sambike Park and even the Ceremonial Circle here in town will we'll play there as well. Our main events are the Robbie Burns Night, end of January, when it's quite cold of course, as well as Canada Day, which is actually our season ender. We shut down for the summertime, so after July 1st, we, have, we may have some functions that we'll get together for, but we're basically done until September, which is quite nice. Uh, the Northwest Territorial Pipe Band is a little different than most pipe bands in Canada. Uh, the majority of pipe bands in Canada practice uh, uh, during the spring and uh, play uh, competitions all summer long, or play all summer long. The Northwest Territorial Pipe Band uh, starts in the fall and plays over winter and takes the summer off. So we're just uh, exactly backwards. My name's uh, Floyd Adlam and I'm with the Northwest Territorial Pipe Band. It's one of the pipe bands that's the furthest north in Canada. I joined the Northwest Territorial Pipe Band in 1976 and have been 
playing with it ever since. Actually started out on the drums and graduated to the bagpipes. Uh, the band uh, started in about 1968 with two or three people uh, got together, Andy Young and a, and a few other people got together and started playing for various events. There was only three or four of them and uh, they uh, called themselves the Yellowknife Pipe Band. In about 1975 they uh, changed the name to the Northwest Territorial Pipe Band and uh, found a few more members, got some money from the then Commissioner Hodgson to um, get uniforms. The tartan was designed by Janet Anderson Thompson and Hugh McPherson of McPherson and Sons in Edinburgh, Scotland. The uh, colours uh, represent the north with the yellow being the colour of the aspens in the fall, the red being the uh, fall tundra, the blue representing the northwest passage, the white representing the ice of the Arctic and the green, of course, uh, the boreal forest. I have been playing for over 20 years now. I started when I was a kid. Pipe bands in general really took off when a lot of Scottish immigrants came between World War I and World War II to come work in Canada. Um, and with that, a lot of girls' bands started in Ontario and in the Maritimes. And I think that's when girls really started playing. Um, you'd have the occasional piper, like in Cape Breton or Prince Edward Island, that was female playing like in the late 1800s, but with the girl bands, it really started to take off. My name's Laurie Crawford. I am a piper with the NWT Pipe Band. I've held a variety of positions in the band over my 25 years. I've uh, instructed and taught many of the players in the band. I held pipe majorship for a number of years in the early 90s. Um, and now I seem to have rolled into the job of working with music and moving the band into the direction of exploring new music. The uniqueness of this pipe band is the fact it is recreational. Um, people don't get their tail in a knot over. The, the, the band does not have the same stress on its members that you find in the southern bands. Um, there's pretty much room for everybody in the band. You know, you can come in as a raw beginner and we'll teach you. And we have to teach people because there's just not good players arrive in Yellowknife on a regular basis. I've been in the band when it's been four pipers. I've been in the band at Burn Supper where we put 18 pipers on the floor. It just fluctuates. I find it fascinating the beginners that I've taught over the years and where they end up. I have beginners who are playing in bands across, across Canada, coast to coast. Laurie Clark and I'm a piper. I would say if you're interested in joining, show up at the first meeting where they invite new people to come and listen to what they have to say about 
what you need to do to kind of get involved and don't be scared away by having to learn the chanter for a year or two first because you're not gonna go directly onto the bagpipes. My advice would be set goals, like long-term goals and short-term goals. So for example, just learning the notes would be a short-term goal and how to read the music and apply it to the practice chanter. And the, a long-term goal, for example, for me was when I found out there was a Scotty Trotter Award, that became my goal. <laughs> I wanted to win that award because I've never had a trophy and I thought, Oh, that'd be kind of a good thing to do, you know, and so that was very motivating and even just picking a piece and just working really hard at every bar and measure in that piece until you get it. Um, each of those little pieces all adds up to, to learning one thing. And when you switch to the pipes from the practice chanter, it's, for me, it was very difficult. So don't get discouraged, don't give up, and listen to every piece of advice that your other band members have to give you because they all have something valuable to offer. Uh, it's not an easy process and people shouldn't think that, uh, that uh, they will be able to play the bagpipes in a week or two. It usually takes a year or a couple of years before you can, uh, can uh, do much with them, but it's a fun process and uh, lots of fun to be in the band. My name is Rob Kent, and I'm the bass drummer for the NWT Pipe Band. Uh, so you need to have a little bit of background in drumming. You, need, you should be able to read music. Uh, drum music will come from that. And then, um, uh, you know, carry on from there. So. Uh, the amount of practice typically that you put at home is going to determine how quick and how fast you're actually going to be getting on the drums and playing the drums. Uh, and that's basically it. You, you need to practice. It's, 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 you know, it's a fact. So just because you're not starting as a kid, just because, you know, you're starting as a, as an adult, you've got tons of time ahead of you to play. And I watched dad play burn supper after burn supper and parades, and he loved the pipes. And to me, that's what is more, the most important, is the love of the bagpipes. So people choosing to come and learn, yeah, it's going to take time. And yeah, you're going to sound terrible for a long time. And yeah, your neighbor's going to hate you. And yes, the dog's going to howl. And you might lose your wife or your spouse in the process. That's just life. Uh, my advice for aspiring pipers would be to be patient and persistent. It's a long process. Um, I think the saying is it takes seven years to become competent on the playing the Great Highland Bagpipes. When I set out, I didn't know that, thankfully, um, but I stuck with it. This, the NWT Pipe Band is a great pipe band. There are lots of talented pipers and they're more than willing to share their experience and knowledge and help pipers along. So joining the NWT Pipe Band is one of the best things I ever did. My name is Ian Reddy. I'm a uh, piper with the Northwest Territory Pipe Band. Um, this is my third year. For those who are beginning, I would highly recommend practicing, um, especially practicing on the chanter as much as possible, um, a minimum of maybe 20 minutes a day. And actually practice more uh, embellishments and stuff like that on your chanter all the time. Always have your chanter out and practicing it. That's what I do. I practice way too much most of the time. And always get on the pipes every day. Grade one pipers pipe every day. You know what? There's ebbs and flows with the band. Ebbs and flows and sometimes there's lots of players, sometimes there's less players. It'll always be. You know, it'll always be. And, and it's good. And as I say, the band, yeah. It's a good place for people to start. But realizing, and people when they move south, they don't realize how lucky they are.